Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with My Hero Academia season 5 episode number 21 or should I call it My Villain Academia. So in the previous episode it was uh, a completely mm, what can I say new thing. Uh, My Villain Academia even the logo was kind of changed you know and uh, we see everything uh, from Shigaraki's perspective in a way and all the other villains perspective what happened what are they doing now and you know their relationship with the meta liberation army uh, Giganto Makia came in we got a little bit of Shigaraki's past how um, you know like he got into all of these things like you know he was lonely not lonely but he was I'm guessing uh, all alone and um, uh, what was that um all for one all for one got him took him in told him like what can i say like you know nice stuff and in a way that was kind of manipulating him because obviously we all know that whatever all for one is doing is because of his own goals he i doubt he cares about shigaraki because it kind of was shown in one of the previous episodes where he was talking with all might you know all might versus uh, all for one when they the battle happened he said like yeah i'm just using him you know just so that i can mess with you ha ha all might like that was like you know the conversation that they had so i guess he really doesn't care about shigaraki he just wants to use him but yeah like and i'm sure like Shigaraki kind of understands that but he doesn't care because like the all, all for one was probably the only one who's like helped him well like gave him a helping hand so all that stuff and you know like then the whole meta liberation army contacts them like you know like they have a like a little uh you know like spark going on they kind of like you know are against each other and then now um uh, he like shigaraki is going to use giganto Machia to go and um you know fight with the meta liberation army he's going to lure giganto make giganto Machia in and yeah that's how he's going to uh, do it so let's see whether his plan goes correctly or not or if some problem arises or something but let's see what happens and like the everything that's happening is kind of in the past in a way so i wonder how they are now like you know whether the major liberation army is working together with the league of villains now or are they still at each other's throats let's like you know check that out so without further ado let's get started this is episode number 21 of my hero academia season 5 so I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here, sync it to whichever is your preference, and let's get started. Alright, so here's the countdown. 3, 2, 1, go. Meta humans. Oh, so this is the start of the Metal Liberation Army. Chikara, Destro, destroy the present. Meta Human Liberation Army. Oh. Wait, he committed suicide? Wait, what? Oh, is this like a son? Oh yeah, this guy. oh okay so yeah they are kind of against each other like the league of villains and the metal liberation army interesting i thought they were going to work together like uh in the beginning when we started this season in the second part of the season like i thought that oh my god like they're going to team up and like again like <laughs> you know this has become a problem but if they're fighting against each other i guess that's good like for the heroes at least like they're going to destroy each other 
Hopefully, I... <laughs> I don't know. But uh, we know what's happening in the present, you know, the whole thing with Hawks, like, you know, being an undercover agent. So we know the Meditation Liberation Army is still there. The League of Villains is also still here. So that means nothing happened that much. Like, <laughs> like it would have been good if, like, you know, the League of Villains took out the Metal Liberation Army and the heroes wouldn't have to do anything. <laughs> oh, boy. But that that clearly doesn't didn't happen because like there's still a threat like Hawks as Hawks says. And there there they are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Okay. What? Wait, isn't this? Wait, so he's a... Wait, what? So he's a... Spy or something like that? Like, we saw him talking with Hawks. What? Whoa! Grand Commander. <laughs> Mini boss, yeah, true. Whoa! Oh, my God. See the blood lost. Oh. Ah, oh, great. <laughs> My villain academia, there you go, revival party. <laughs> wow. Yeah, true. Redistro. Huh. Okay. Okay. Oh, they needed it back. Yeah. Well, they have another person, Gigantomachia, which... Oh boy, he's going to get a rude awakening. 
Yeah, and there's like a city full of them. Yeah. Wow. What? Oh my god. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> well... She was... Giving her introduction speech a bit too much. Oh boy. Mm. Um. Oh no! Mines! Oh god. Curious. What? Landmine. Oh. oh. Okay. Okay. Oh no. Oh. Ah. There you go. Okay. Wow, she is quite curious. Oh yeah, she is curious. Oh. Oh no, there. Whoa! Did did he change? God. Oh my god. Whoa. Wait, what? Wait, what was that flashback? I'll have to check that out again. God. Um, I should. We should ask that question to you as that. Well. Oh my God. Hmm. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. All right. Got a Oh, is this her backstory? Yeah. Oh my god. Oh. This is the parents? Yeah, parents. Oh. Hmm. 
embodiment of a serpent. Oh no. Um No one said, Oh, God. So, how, why did that break then? That that mask. Whoa, what the, what was that? Whoa! Well, these guys are crazy. Oh. 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 Wait, wait. Oh, she had Uraraka's blood. So does he have Deku's blood as well? Oh my god. Oh, that was the only thing. Um... Oh! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Wait, wait! She was able to... Oh my god! Yeah! Yeah! I think so. No, wait, what? <laughs> oh! What happened to the lady? <laughs> God. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, she, he has not slept for quite a long while. <laughs> yeah. Boy. Hmm. 
<laughs> Glitchy. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, Nana. She he remembers. Wait, who's this? Oh! <coughs> God. <coughs> My God. Ah. Uh. Mm, yeah. Everyone's uh, quirk is like God. Oh wait, what? That easily? Uh, whoa! What the? Only one with the oh. <laughs> mm, yeah. Ooh, okay. Control, not me, guys. Poor thing. Wow. Huh. He, he was talking about Toga, so I'm guessing he went to find her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank God he found her. Oh no. Um, okay. Oh god, who is this? Oh no! Skeptic, what? What? That's a weird. Okay, so they have like um, different uh, plans for different characters. Like just like he, he said, like we need Toga to die because of you know curious, and but he he wants um, twice to be alive 
because his powers are needed for their organization so okay hmm they're like doing calculated what can i say um like calculating everything and like doing stuff uh it's a mess and quite a few things we uh, this episode kind of suddenly brought in front of us like it's kind of going slow and suddenly this episode like like had so much information the whole thing with toga um, we got a little bit of flashback uh, re related to shigaraki um we got to see um who else uh, the other characters like there were so many new characters that were introduced suddenly with new powers like that ice guy um curious then this guy the, the last guy on, on the computer that guy who else uh what is that the end <clears throat> like so many characters got introduced their powers how they kind of work and everything like it's a lot of things to actually process this episode okay um we so i'm guessing uh what's the name gigantomachia gigantomachia is still not here so he'll probably be here it'll take quite a little bit amount of time so okay okay so the <coughs> whole thing with the metal liberation army is that the like they want like freedom to use the meta powers as a natural right so so the guy who started all of this is Chikara Yosubashi who is the father father isn't it of the the, the new guy uh, his name is Redestro so he's the father of that uh, that person and okay he started the metal liberation army and after uh, like you know they fought with the uh, the country they were defeated arrested and the army was dissolved and he started writing writing the book and then committed uh like you know she he killed himself now his son is continuing this and uh, this like as, that like they said something like Destro didn't even know that he had a son so I wonder how Redestro understood that he's his son. I don't know. I mean, probably his mom told him. <coughs> Anyways, okay. Um, okay, and here we see the League of Villains. Okay, first thing, the sliding hero. So he's working, like he's saying that I have been commanded to be your guide. I want... Uh, if you want to speak with the leader of the liberation army then come with me so he he's, he's like a traitor uh, for the uh, you know like for the heroes you know because he, he's a hero he's supposed to be a hero so he's working for the metal liberation army so i'm guessing he's like a spy or something and i'm i think that's why uh most probably Hawks, but I don't know. Hawks was kind of mm, keeping an eye on him. I can't remember that scene, but I, I remember that Hawks and he had a conversation. Hawks was kind of acting weird, so that's why. <clears throat> Anyways. Alright, so Deka City is a place where 90 percent of the population are of dormant liberation warriors so most of the people living here like you know the normal people they are of the metal liberation army and no one knows it that means you know because if, if everyone knew it like you know if the government knew it they would come and like stop them or like arrest them or something so they're like all undercover or something like they're not like giving out what 
they're doing but like a huge commotion is happening here like you know like so, so many things are happening i'm kind of wondering why is uh you know the heroes not no getting notified of this uh i oh most probably like you know he, he has just like bought like uh, the, like obviously the the heroes that are here for example we saw the sliding hero and i'm guessing there are also a few of other heroes who are probably in charge of this place maybe they bought them or something you know and they are kind of keeping quiet of whatever is happening here i don't know might be because we can see that the sliding hero is like, working for them so similar thing must have been happening with other heroes as well anyways so yeah this guy he says that so <coughs> Just a sec. Mm. Okay, so they started their fight. Um, okay, so and then they like start talking about the Nomus and uh, Redestro explains why the Nomus won't come here because of a lot of hints that the nomus are cannot be used currently because they're just something that uh all for one gave um, gave them kind of like as a gift in a way so yeah you don't have enough of them okay uh all right uh the thing that curious i think that's her name she says that uh just a second a lot of things are uh like you know happening in this single episode it's kind of difficult to actually wrap everything around okay uh she says that uh they like you know the the people here they are continuously training and drilling their bodies and their minds uh so in order to live more human lives that's why it's a nuisance this current state where you people came later and have no great cause but are the talk of the town so ba basically what she's saying is that they don't like them being at the spotlight like what is that the reason why they're doing this because they're just jealous of uh, i don't know might be because <clears throat> like according to her and i'm sure according to all the other uh, like, you know members of the mental liberation army uh, they are doing something as for a good cause i'm sure that's what they think you know so like that's why she's saying that people like you who just wants to like you know rampage around without any good reason it's a nuisance that you are getting more uh you know like <laughs> popularity than us who are trying to do such a noble thing or something like that so that's what she's saying so that's why she like you know like they called him there and uh, decided to destroy the league of villains here and now so that their uh, organization can get more uh, you know uh <laughs> popularity or whatever And this lady is was a reporter, as as we can see, like the way she's saying everything. All right, and now here, th weird things starts happening. First of all, the quirks uh, of the villains starts changing. Um, Toga, as we already uh, all knew, that Toga is only able to take uh like, you know after ingesting the blood she can only change herself and like you know it's kind of like a disguise uh she is unable to uh, replicate the quirks but here she was suddenly able to do that mm, okay so and also we got to see uh the the lady the curious her uh power making bombs you know making mines and he can even like you know like the, the people here are so what can i say uh like uh, like you know like so kind of out of their mind that they themselves are ready to become like you know uh like time bombs sticking bombs 
they like sacrifice themselves just for you know just like getting trying to destroy toga <clears throat> okay um um okay so this thing when he she starts talking about toga why she uh like you know uh what do you call it like gave up her normal life and stuff like you know there's a flashback where there's a there's a boy who's kind of bloody and fighting he looks a lot like deku doesn't he but he has like blue blue hair or is it green i, I can't say he looks very identical to deku but i don't think that's deku i might be wrong though like i'm not sure and we can see that toga is watching him so it might be someone else like you know it looks very similar to deku or it might be deku i don't know but i don't think that's deku because deku never fights like this does he you know he's like wearing a school uniform and he's fighting so i don't think deku has ever done that so it's probably someone else I'm, I'm not sure but it's like a little flashback here that i was quite curious about <laughs> and we see here that the mask that he's she's wearing is kind of cracking and breaking and that mask is the mask that she used to wear just to become normal you know she herself is very different from the inside and like it's interesting i i really want to like you know i'm sure like they'll give us more uh, information about toga in the future uh, i really want to like know and understand like what actually was the thing with toga like, you know why she is here you kind of got a little gist of the her situation her backstory but still there's a lot of question and uh, like that like i have yeah like uh toga says that what is a normal life and she starts laughing yeah and okay so now we get to know the black backstory she basically assaulted a guy uh, one of the kids and started sucking blood out of him and someone saw that and reported that and like you know like it was all got huge news coverage and all and we can see that her childhood has been quite different because he she, she i'm guessing she's she was fascinated with blood and we can see that she's like killing like you know little birds and stuff bringing that to their her mom and dad and the mom and dad is like like your devil and everything so okay uh like, okay we see toga kind of looking at that uh bird that's dead and curious says but what was truly unfortunate was <coughs> the normal feeling of admiration <coughs> combined with your interest in blood the fact that these two intertwined was not something that society could accept at all so she got so fascinated with blood that she started killing creatures and like ingesting the blood like that curiosity is what made her start so i'm guessing she, at the beginning she was basically just killing or like you know like picking up dead things which was like bleeding and she got more curious about blood and then i'm guessing she started killing little creatures her herself and then she started kind of putting them in their in her mouth and and that's how it escalated and into like later on where he actually hurts a classmate and starts sucking his blood and here's what skura says she, she says that that's why you put a lid on it suppressing yourself putting on a mask and <clears throat> yeah the mom and dad are like why can't you just be normal just live a normal life 
<clears throat> okay um so what she basically did was she started putting on a mask of a normal person you know because of because normal in society is something that she is not so she just wanted a normal life like funny not funny but the, the ironic thing is she wanted a normal life but she herself was not normal so that was the main thing here main problem here because she herself understood that that's why she started uh, wearing a mask of a normal girl as she said later on that i started laughing like a like you know normal high school girl <coughs> just to be a part of this normal the normal society okay um i don't like her i'm not unfortunate at all uh, when i'm happy i smile big okay um Okay, so here is where everything, not everything, but her work starts manifesting. The Okay, every, every time I was chased by the policeman heroes, whether I liked it or not, I was becoming overly sensitive to what was happening around me. Okay, when I pretended to be a high school girl, here it is, the world become a tiny bit kinder. <sighs> don't get caught don't get caught don't get caught all right so that's what uh. like so here's the thing i'm looking at it at the full uh, like you know at the full picture now i can and i can understand now like what toga actually is <clears throat> so the thing here is uh, just a sec okay uh, the thing here is that she she wanted to be a normal kid but she herself was fascinated with not normal stuff which the society does not like you know accept as normal she understood that that's why she started wearing a mask of a normal high school girl she started like you know like as she like started what can i say like trying to act that part you know we can see that the mask is cracking day by day and she says that like whenever i wear the mask of a normal girl the world becomes a tiny bit kinder and she becomes a normal kid and she she likes that but her like you know inner feelings is not normal she she's fascinated with abnormal things so because of that contrast and the the whole thing like her mask starts cracking and it completely cracks down and she assaults a uh, uh, boy in his uh, in her class I'm guessing hurts him injures him and starts sucking the blood and everyone gets to see that her identity is exposed and so she does not get that normal life you know so now this has a big connection with her quirk her quirk what is her quirk her quirk is actually becoming someone else and like you know we always have seen her fascination to become the person that she loves for example deku she she likes deku so much that she wants to become deku she likes ochako so much she wants to become ochako the whole this comes from her past you know her past her backstory where she always wanted to become someone normal not herself she doesn't want to be herself she wants some to become someone who is normal and that's why i'm guessing her work is like this which is like uh, taking someone else's identity becoming them because she wants to be a, a normal person and that's why like she doesn't want to be herself that's why that's the quirk she has and she like she only started with becoming that person without being able to replicate the quirk but now because of as uh, the curious says the life and that situation her uh, power changes changes and she is completely probably starting to become completely like the other person and i'm sure if this starts like you know continues changing 
Uh, Himiko uh, Toga will probably become a person who will be able to completely replicate other people. Like for example, she has uh, Ochako's uh, blood with her. She was able to make uh, use of Ochako's quirk. Like now imagine, uh, like you know, this becoming like, you know, her being able to fully use that power. Like if she just have a has a blood, she can become anyone. Like any of the powerful heroes, she can become. Uh, like just like Deku, uh, Todoroki, Bakugo. She can completely become them and use their quirk just like they use it. That's like a dangerous power. If you know, it has a few conditions that needs to be fulfilled. For example, getting the blood and everything. But after that, it's like one of the most powerful things. And she unlocked it. Okay, and she says that I will love, live and die normal. Here it is. Her fascination towards normalcy. <clears throat> I want to become more like what I love. There you go. She doesn't want to be herself, she wants to be someone that she loves and she wants to be a normal person. My god, like, now that I'm looking at it from, like, you know, like the whole picture and kind of got what she is, I can understand why she is so, you know, fascinated about, like, you know, other people and, like, you know, the whole thing with her obsession with love and a normalcy. Alright. <clears throat> And then like the toga kind of like collapses and we see a few other things as well first of all the thing with shigaraki where we see a little bit of a back back story little bit of a past flashback and she starts he starts hallucinating and i think she, that that was nana wasn't it nana shimura just a sec let me check that portion again Another flashback. Yeah, there's like a little um, picture. Yeah, with Nana and him. I'm guessing that's Shigaraki. You know? Kind of laughing. And he cannot recall that properly. And then we see another person here who looks a lot like Nana black-haired girl she says i'm fine okay is that yeah yeah it's her it's someone else i'm not sure who this is like the one with two little pigtails we also saw her in the previous episode i think those are called pigtails or are they called pony no twin tails sorry um and she's calling him tenko which was obviously his previous name and so he himself is unable to recall it. And because of whole, that whole thing, his quirk also mutates. He is now able to chain react his quirk. I don't know what that was, but he only touched one person and all the other person who was probably in contact with them kind of got like a chain reaction and everyone started decaying. Wow, like they're getting po more powerful. Okay, that. And then uh, we see Dabi. Dabi versus the, the eyes guy. You know, the, the guy who controls eyes and stuff. And Dabi's fighting with him. I'm not sure what's going to happen. But yeah. And then we get to see twice where he is. And we already, we already, already knew that he has a fascination with Toga. And like both her persona his personalities are kind of like at odds with each other and he finds Toga Toga's almost dying okay okay the, here's another thing this is the important part uh, there's another person who says twice has met up with Toga there in story said at Ikeda's Toga is still alive we need to make sure she's dead for Curious' sake okay one thing I wonder is Curious dead? I don't think so I'm not sure because they did not show what happened to her. All the other people, I'm guessing they died. <clears throat> but I don't know. Let's see. I'm sure we'll get to know in the future. Um, okay, so we need to make sure she is dead for Curious' sake. Jin Bubai Gawara, twice metability double. In a sense, he's complete opposite of Toka. Okay, one thing I am always confused about is twice as, uh, like, you know, twice as quirk and Toga's quirk. So Toga's quirk is she herself becomes the other person. 
and twice his power is he can make clones of other person, isn't it? I might be wrong though, like, we've never actually seen his quirk properly in a, in, in a proper way, just like we saw Toga's quirk, you know? We saw it in the flashbacks and also in one of the previous battles, but that was just it. Anyways, uh, okay, in a sense, he's the complete opposite of Toga. He made copies of himself, was almost killed by those selves, and lost his own sense of self. Okay, just a sec. Um, okay, one thing. The people who come behind twice. Just a sec, let me check them out. Yeah, they look completely like twice. Like, who are they? Like, okay. Oh, I think they kind of explain it later on. Okay, let me just like see that. Uh, check that out. Uh, it's complete opposite of Toga. I lost his sense of self. And. Alright, they start attacking him. Okay, this guy. Tomoyasu Chikazoku. Uh, skeptic. Anthrom. Morph. He can change things that are about the same size as people, like fridges and desks, into puppets. Oh, okay. So it's his his work. That's why it's like looking like uh like you know twice those those people. I'm guessing those are like an inanimate objects, fridges and stuff. And he made it so that they can like put a strain on his uh mind. With your power, no matter what happens to redistro we can bring him back all right we will not repeat the tragedy of destro all right so well that's his plan like his plan is uh, keeping him alive so that he can use his quirk so that if something happens to destro uh, a redestro they can bring him back again just like like the previous uh like you know uh, tragedy won't happen which happened with destro my god, there's a lot of things that was happening in this one episode. Ah, <sighs> wow. Okay, so they have different plans for different characters. Like, they want Toga to die, they want um, Twice to join them. I'm not sure what they want with Shigaraki and the others, but yeah. And, like, the thing here is that Gigantomaki is still not here. So after he comes, we'll, like, the actual fight will start. Like, I'm looking forward to that. Oh, damn. Like... Yeah, like this really shows that these all these like when twice was kind of crying and saying that like you know this is the only place that we can come back we can call home so don't die you know like i said this in the previous episode as well that these all these people are unfortunate souls they like you know obviously heroes are also humans they cannot save everyone so these people were the only unfortunate souls who were not saved by the heroes and Taking that opportunity, all of, all for one comes in, tricks all of them, and kind of like you know they kind of become like a whole like villain group, and like you know like helps them like he kind of helps Shigaraki and Shigaraki recruits them. So Shigaraki himself is like not a bad person, but he just like you know was manipulated in a way, and like you know and, like you know like all for one used his weakness as a. Uh, like, you know method to actually make him start listening to him and i'm sure shigaraki also realizes that but since all for one was the one that saved him he probably doesn't care whatever happens to him he just wants to be of use to all for one and like you know like and just like shigaraki kind of looks up at all for one i'm sure all the other like you know villains here of the league of villains they look up to shigaraki like that that's why they're kind of connected in a way that, you know, like these people, they think, like they, they know that Shigar, like with Shigaraki in the League of Villains is the only place that they can live, you know, they can have friends because society has excluded them, you know, they have ex kind of in a way exiled them because of their past. So, yeah, it's a sad thing because they're just lonely human beings, each and every one of them. And all for one is just using that so yeah anyway so that was it that was my reaction to uh 
uh, my hero academia season 5 episode number 21 so if you guys enjoyed my reaction be sure to press the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know and i'll check them out so yeah thank you guys for watching i'll see you guys next week with another episode of my hero academia season 5 so until then goodbye and have a nice day